This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, a warm welcome back to the channel. You join me en route to my favorite place, Carrots Rear Body Shop, where today we're gonna to be doing a few of the final little touches before the car heads into the spray booth to get a beautiful coat of Rosso Scooter Rear, complete with racing stripe. Now we need to finish off the major service on the car. I've already started a few of the items. We've done a lot of the fluid changes. We've done the coolant, we've done the oil. That had to be done in order to test the car fully. Uh, now we're gonna be going right into it. We're gonna be doing belts. We're gonna be doing hydraulic tensioners, water pumps, no corners cut on this one. It is gonna be one well sorted engine. Anyway, that and a few other items. Join me as I get there and get these little hands dirty and the sun out my face. Right, we've got a lot to cover today. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've done all the fluids on this car. That's oil, filters, coolant, power steering, F1. All of that has been changed. We needed to do that in order for us to uh, check the engine as we switched it over. So today, we're on to the really technical stuff. We're talking about the stuff that gives Ferrari owners absolute nightmares. We're doing the timing belt, otherwise known as the cam belt service on the car. So let's get it up in the air. The only other thing I do need to change is that water pump. Okay, next job on the Stradale Spider build is all this area. We've done all the fluids. We're now onto cam belts. So we've got to do belts both sides, tensioners, hydraulic tensioners, everything down here, all our auxiliary belts. Uh, so the main thing is obviously cam belts. Now, one of the reasons why we're doing this. So we looked at the history and we should have done that before. Absolute hands up. Before I uh, put this engine back in, we should have checked the history. We naturally presumed this had all been serviced up. So luckily we have checked it and we are still able to do it. Fortunately on the 360, we have this axis panel that enables us to do it. But if you look at our belts, that's that one. And then again, this side, slightly more loose but the thing that concerns me even more this is our hydraulic tensioner here now the gap on that collar should be between 1.9 and 2.3 mil that is our feeler gauge set to 2.3 mil now watch this can you see that it's way 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 more than 2.3 mil look at that i've got a load of wiggle room in there uh, the other thing is, if we look at this, is the new hydraulic tensioner for one side. So we've got the pin that goes through this, and as you can see, it comes through the other side. There's a little hole in the barrel there that just, uh, this holds it in place. Now, as you can see, down the shaft there, it's quite far in. However, if you look at this one, now it's spun around but you can see just at the top there on the shaft that is where the pin is so it's right up here so I could literally get a pin in there it should be right down anyway that's why uh, we are going to be changing everything so I need to remove a few things now it's a kind of vicious circle this we need to remove the bolt here to take all of this off in order to remove the belts to do that we need to be able to lock all of this and we've got a special tool which is this one here so we need to go in and this sits in between our flywheel and our kind of clutch locks it in place we can then undo this which is about 190 196 newton meters I think that's the uh, spec on it and then finally we can start getting to our belts and remove those anyway as you can see the other thing I've done here is I've lined it all up We've checked the top dead sensor um, and then we're going to lock those in place as per factory service manual with these and jobs are good. For 2022, I'm going to be upping the video content on the channel, getting back to particular builds that you all want and hopefully getting those finished. But I also need your help. Using today's video sponsor Squarespace, I'm going to be setting up a website with an online store, not only to get rid of the surplus Ferrari parts from all of the projects over the years, but I'm going to have a bit of fun 
setting up a new line of merch. But I'd love some input from you guys on this, not just t-shirts, hats, mugs. I would like some really cool, inspiring ideas relating to the channel that would be really cool in an online store. I'll then utilize the Squarespace simple to use web tools, pick a template, add in the products, get the marketing sorted right there and then monitor the analytics to see what really works. So let's come up with some awesome ideas or designs ready for that 2022 online store. If you wanna be inspired for 2022, head on over to Squarespace for everything website related. It's the one-stop site to use. And right now, if you click on my link in the description below the video, you're gonna save 10% off your first domain or website. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to business. So for our belt service, we've got a few special tools that we're going to need to use on this. Uh, we've got the little lock tool here. That locks our crank in order to get the, uh, the pulley off to be able to actually remove the two belts. We've got this little tool here, which is for our tensioning of the bearing. We'll use that in there, like so. I get these, or I find these are very uh, useful, especially with the soft little kind of rubberized uh, tips there. They just help me hold the uh, belts in place. Uh, we've got a breaker bar, we've got these, you're gonna love these. This is mole grips, this uh, clamps everything to keep it from moving. 36 mil shallow sockets. We've got some feeler gauges there, and then uh, just the normal stuff. But this one is the one I'm looking forward to using. This is my new digital torque wrench supplied by my mate Mark. And uh, looking forward to you really using that. Um, the bolt we need to really do is the crank bolt. That's 196 newton meters, if I remember correctly. And so you need something quite beefy to be able to handle that. Anyway, let's crack on with it. So our tool will slot into here. However, what we need to do is uh, rotate this so we've got a recess that this bit here to slot into. So it's a bit of a catch-22 this. We need to rotate it to be able to do this, then take the uh, front bolt out, then uh, remove this. It's all about loosening that bolt and then remove the plate again. Now that we've got the crank locked, we can undo the bolt here. Give it a bit of light, there you go. So uh, otherwise it's just gonna spin, so. Okay, now that we are locked off on the crank, it enables me to remove the bolt here. That is the name of the game. 36 mil shallow sockets, extension bar. That allows me to get on here. And with a bit of brute force. Ugh. We only need two hands for this. We're going to start loosening that off. Next, we're going to remove our lock tool, which enables me to rotate the engine again, line up everything, and then we can remove the belts. Now that we've got the pulley off, this is the lovely bit you're going to uh, enjoy. We're going to use our vice grips. We are going to clamp up everything over here to stop it from moving. Now, this is the official way in the service manual to do this. Now we don't want to go majorly tight, just need to be able to crimp, cramp them, crimp them, cramp them, <laughs> cramp them, clamp them, just 
like that so that it just can't move. And now we are ready to remove the belts. So we're going to be using our 17mm socket, releasing this 17mm socket. We've got all our timing marks. I've checked everything and we're all good. So we need to release this, which is rather tight. Now, what you should see is this bearing move, and there we go. And as you can see, the hydraulic tensioner there has spread even more. <coughs> so let's remove this bearing fully. And that is our bearing. Okay, we can remove the belt. There we go. No obvious signs of uh, anything bad. Obviously, this is preventive maintenance doing a job like this. Don't want to be doing is doing it once it's all failed because that's when it costs a heck of a lot more so we're now going to remove the hydraulic tensioner there's this one here okay hydraulic tensioner now as you can see that is the hole that was above the collar here and that is the pinhole that it should normally go through. That's obviously twisted. But um, somewhere, often these have a little date stamp on them. I'm guessing that is 2001, 4th of January 2001. So, um, 20 years old. There we go. I think that's a manufacturing date. Anyway, um, there we go. Let's get those swapped over. So we've got our upgraded tensioner bearings here, so let's compare that. And this doesn't feel notchy or anything like that, but that is just so much smoother. So much difference. Anyway, we're going to put that in place. And that goes over here. <coughs> Move the camera so I got some uh, some wiggle room. Let's just pop that in place for now. Just loose. Gonna pop the belt on. Go to the old bearing. all right so as you can see our belt here you want to really keep this length nice and tight between the tooth and these up here and the same in that little bit in there and then this side is all taken up with the tension so you just need to make sure that this bit here is the correct bit. This bit, we're now gonna work the magic with. 
Okay, so this next bit is the tricky bit. We've got three things that we need to do here. So first of all, we need to tension our bearing. So we use our little tension tool here. So we move the bearing, that tensions the belt. So we take a reading from our belt. That is a frequency reading, which I'm gonna do on my phone. We need to do that. Make sure the frequency, that is the most important of our belt tension is correct. Then we also need to make sure that this pin here in our hydraulic tensioner can move in and out freely. And then finally, we need to measure the gap here on uh, between the collar which needs between 1.9 and 2.3 mil. So all three of those take a little bit of kind of playing around here. And at the same time, the problem you have is as soon as you get this correct in the right position and then bolt up the, uh, the 17 mil bolt there to spec to the right torque, tends to change some of those things, the frequency or the pin or something like that. So, a little bit of playing around with this one so i'm going to go ahead and do that i've gone i've done all this on a, a complete video anyway so you guys are, are completely welcome to watch that but uh, for now i'm going to play around with that in the background get this one sorted out there we go yeah where are you going up here You can see, I can clearly move that in and out. Now, wouldn't normally advise pulling it all the way out. But as you can see, we've got easy movement there. Now we need to check our gap and our frequency of the belt, but we need to release these to do that. So first of all, I'm gonna just check a few little things, make sure everything's, we triple check everything on this. Don't want it to go wrong. Okay, that's all done. So, check our little gap here on the collar, our pin. Now, we need to rotate the engine, which means, remove our little clamp there. We're gonna rotate the engine a few times, let this settle down for a few minutes, and then we're gonna check our frequencies on the belts, and check our pins, and our gap once again. Okay, next thing we need to do is test our frequency on the belts. And this is the official way Ferrari do it to make sure your belts are correctly tensioned up. So we take two readings. Number one here is on our long expanse and number two is on the short one. We add the two together, combine them, and our total should be between 190 and 220. Now, the official tool Ferrari would use is no longer available. And if you can get one, it's extremely expensive. So I use a free app with the uh, iPhones or any kind of cell phone, smartphone, uh, microphone. And we just take a reading down here. 56. 33. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of background noise. Even me talking is affecting this. Uh, we've got machines going, we've got hammers going. So I'm gonna wait for these guys to go to lunch and we'll just do a final check on this. Now, the pin actually can come out. Now, there's a couple more things we do need to do. So we need to make sure the frequency is okay. And then we're happy with that. It needs to be between 190 and 220 on the combined. And once that is done, I get to use my torque wrench. I'm going to put that up to 49 newton meters and we're going to torque up our 17 mil bolt there on the tensioner. Now, <clears throat> apologies for the background noise here. 
But um, basically, what we're going to do is do that. But as you tighten that up, what happens is the bearing tends to also move, and that obviously changes all your frequencies, all your gaps there. So one little thing that I like to try and do is I use this other tool. I kind of tension that back as I turn this, and it seems to just help it. There's still a little bit of movement sometimes. But here we go. Okay, this is where we get to use the big boy, the new one. Uh, so our bolt down here, 196 Newton meters, which is a lot. We have to get the muscle out for this, the big guns. 196, okay. Not as bad as I thought. Okay, so I'm utilizing a bit of help here just to come to help me do the brakes on this thing. Um, so what we're gonna do is we put all the carbon ceramics on here. We need to bleed it because all of the fluid has been changed, it's coming out. So it's a good opportunity. Josh is going to pump the pedal. We're going to go old school on this. It's the best way I find to actually uh, bleed these things while I work each of the four corners. So we're going furthest away. We've filled it up with uh, some fluid. Just going to pump it. We're going to see what we can do here. Okay, that's it. Keep pumping. Oh, it's really good. Okay, and then uh, pump and hold it down, yeah? Like that? Yep. So same again, got three or four, yeah I'm getting loads of air now, that's good. Hmm. Hold on, it's not coming through this thing, it's like the nipple's blocked. Okay, try again Josh. Yeah, that's better. What did you do? Well, I think the actual nipple was blocked. Oh. Yeah, a few more bubbles. Still doing it, yeah? Uh, a yeah. Few, more, few more air bubbles here. It's always the last one, I tell you. Really? I think it goes well and then the last one causes problems.
Okay, the brakes are all done. We got fresh fluid and they're all working perfectly. And I had to take that opportunity while I had my uh, brake pedal man, Josh, around to be able to do that. I'm gonna jump back now. We're gonna finish off the service on this one. A few more little jobs and then it is ready to go into the paint booth along with that thing. We'll put a new set of plugs in the car. We have just received a box and this is a pretty special one. So, part of the build, there are a few little key items that are completely different on the Spyler compared to the Stradale. So, my guys at Artune have made some custom ones especially for this build. Let me show you what we've got. So, we've got the engine lid grills here, and as you can see, we've got the correct carbon weave. And these are completely different to the design of the Spider, and they, you just can't buy them. So we've had these done for the build. The other really, really cool thing are the engine panels. Check those out. Now I'm going to show you uh, the original, how it looks. So these are the normal Spider ones just metal and as you can see look at that comparison they are going to look absolutely awesome on this car I can't wait to fit those so they're ready to go on now let me show you uh, the engine lid grills here how different they are follow me over here Okay, so this is the original spider grill, and the reason we have changed it to this Stradale design is we've used the design of these. So we've got the mesh grill here, and the Ferrari weave pattern to mimic that. Look at that, and that is going to go on our engine lid over here, and it's going to look absolutely peachy. But the best bit guys is r have hooked you up with a 10% discount on all of their carbon goodies. That's Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, you name it, they make carbon for it. BMW, everything. Anyway, I'm going to put a link in the description below for uh, r -tuned. Use that, get 10% off and get yourself some awesome carbon like this. One of the final jobs we need to do is put down the floor mats. Now, if you remember in a previous video, I said we couldn't use the original Stradale ones that are just rubber mats because on the Spider we have this extra bracing here. So what we've done is referred to the 16M, so the uh, 430 Scuderia convertible version, which also has these, but it also on top of that has some extra bracing in this area so we've used the uh, concept of the scooter here and at great expense we've bought the metal mats let me show you so they slot down in here i'm pretty sure you agree they look really good now the only problem is we've got bracing here where we can bolt it down to but over here nothing at all so we need to make a slight modification put that somewhere safe so what i've done is i've measured up this now we could go with the factory option and order the equivalent of this that goes in the area but it is extremely expensive we are talking lots of money so we're referring to the uh, diagram and instead i've ordered up some tubing and we are going to make our own so i've measured all this up the height is a bit deceiving because we've got a plate here then we got this but the actual height is about here so 
What I've done on the floor is marked up all the areas where the screw holes, or the bolt holes, go on the Scuderia floor mat. And then we're going to make some bracing up and we're going to kind of use the 430 parts diagram to get an idea of where that needs to be. So we've got three holes down this side. I've marked them with the uh, nail varnish, one, two here. And then we can use this one here. So we've got uh, all our markings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away now. I've got my bracing there. I've got some more here. And we're going to make the floor and basically raise it a little bit ready for that and then all of this can be painted before we actually put the uh, the mats down so that's the idea i've got to go and cut it all up and make it look like the 430. well guys there you go i'm going to continue with uh, the floors on this getting the bracing right the surfacing is all done we've got the lovely carbon bits I cannot wait for this one to go to the next stage which is to the spray booth where it's going to get a lovely coat of rosso scooter rear complete with factory racing stripe and this baby is gonna start going back together we're almost done on this one anyway guys hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're not already and you can check out what i get up to on a daily basis over on my instagram till the next time guys stay safe ciao for now